Hi, Tom Walls, Carbide Processors. Today I would like to talk about carbide grades. A um, lot of misinformation out there about carbide grades, particularly the C grades. Okay, here's my source. This is the Machinery's Handbook. This one I looked it up is 1992. Um, still a heck of a lot better than nothing, but I think I will get a new one. Anyway, if you don't have a Machinery's Handbook and you have anything to do with machinery, Go get one. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful reference. Look at the size of that sucker. Um, full of all sorts of things, cutting tools, feeds and speeds, etc. Anyway, that's my source for information on carbide grades. They talk about carbide grade classifications, uh, C1 to C19. This is in our blog, and you can see the address for our blog up there. They talk about 19 different carbide grades, C1 to C4 are general grades for cast iron, non-ferrous, and non-metallic materials. These are the grades primarily used for woodworking. Uh, occasionally people will use a C5, C6 on some man-made materials. As it is sometimes understood in the wood industry, and this is in no way clear, C1 is generally considered a tough grade. It's tougher than C4. It's harder to break. Doesn't wear as long, but it's harder to break. C2 is sometimes referred to as a general purpose or sawmill grade. So is C3. C4 is generally considered a longer wearing uh, grade. A lot of the big box suppliers brag about having C4 carbide tips on their saw. And C4 is a good grade. However, these grades are, go back to 1940s when the Buick and the U.S. Army got together and decided that they needed a naming system for carbide. So what they came up with is the C grades. So if you were cutting non-ferrous materials and you were doing roughing with non-ferrous materials, you told your supplier that you needed a C1 and they gave you a C1 grade. If you had a wear surface with no shock, they gave you a C9 grade, um, and so on, through C19, which is radioactive shielding. Uh, if you need radioactive shielding, call and order a C19 grade. It was entirely up to the suppliers as to what they would give you. It had nothing to do with cobalt percentage, had nothing to do with grain size, how long it had wear, how tough it was, or whatever else. It was just what the supplier thought would satisfy C1, C19, C4 requirements or whatever. And this is still widely used in the industry. However, there have been huge advances in everything since the 1940s. Automobiles, television sets, computers, um, half the stuff I see in the office behind me, um, the glass. Nope, there, now there, there, yeah, there it is. The glass in the distillation set, much, much tougher than the glass in the 40s. Of course, this computer, the printers, the whiteboard, uh, the whole rest of it. Anyway, modern grades. I got started looking in the 90s. I got started reading about how ceramics and cermets were coming in in carbide grades. Thought we ought to look into it. We originally started experimenting with true surmets, and they worked really well in wood. They were real hard to grind, and they could break. Uh, they weren't industry acceptable. This is an industry that when they say, give me something exactly like what I'm using now, but better, they mean exactly. They mean no changes. They mean they don't want to run it differently. They don't want to grind it differently. They don't want to braise it differently. So we've come up with a variety of new grades. Here are just three of them. We have a nail cutting grade, not for cutting nails, but for cutting materials that may have nails or rocks in it and surviving. It's The nail cutting is listed twice here because it is much, much tougher than a C1, gives much longer life than a C1. There was always a trade-off between a C1 and a C3 or a C4. C1 was tougher, C4 gave you a lot longer life but was more likely to break, and it doesn't make any difference whether your tips wear out and you produce bad lumber 
or whether you, your tips break and you produce bad lumber, you're still producing bad lumber. So we have a super C grade that runs somewhere from a C one and a half to a C three and a half. If you want to try and equate it to the old C grade, what it really means to you is that it gives you about two to five times the life. It is much, much less likely to break. It will stay sharper longer, produce better lumber, give you better cuts, require less maintenance. Um, Super C, the only mistake we made on Super C was I didn't know how good it was going to be, so I didn't price it high enough. I should have priced it a lot higher than it is. It's just about the same price as ordinary carbide with much, much better results. On the Surmats, we took the Surmats and went back to the drawing board and dumped another ton of money into it and came up with Surmat, a Surmat 2 we call it, to differentiate it from an ordinary Surmat. Our Surmat 2 brazes and grinds just like ordinary carbide, just like a C4, same braze alloy, same equipment, same technique, same setting, same grinding wheels, same grinders, same feeds, same speeds, everything, but what it does is it lasts two to ten times as long depending on the material you're cutting. Um, that's why I've got a C4, C4 plus, 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 triple plus. Some people compare it to a C6, which I don't know, you can do it if you want to, but the point is it's harder to break than a C4. It's harder to break than a C3, It'll maybe somewhere around there. It's a lot harder to break than a traditional C4 while giving two to ten times the life. So that's what we mean by carbide grades now. The standard C classification still has some value because everybody uses it, although almost nobody knows what it means. But there are much, much better grades. And these are what we're using when we have saws custom built for people by our customers. Um, you really do get a saw with a Super C, call it two, three, five times as long with a Surmet 2, call it 5 to 10 times as long. Some stuff, the real abrasive stuff, is still hard. You may only get twice the life. Thank you.